so we're going to talk about perfectly clear today and let me just let me close this out here we're going to talk about a, a product an application a tool that i that i use affectionately called perfectly clear and um, i'm going to show you not only the the product itself and how it can save you time as, as well as money and increase your bottom line i'm actually going to show you a workflow method that i use and it's workflow is, is super important and I, I really guys want i really want you guys to embrace this in terms of um, what it does my name is keith b dixon i'm a commercial photographer for those of you who don't know me um, this is my 17th going into my about my 18th year um, commercial meaning that mostly work with companies and i uh, photograph a lot of portraiture and events also do print on site uh, i have three brands i have an architectural brand uh, a consumer event brand called Event Photographic, which uh, we photograph weddings and birthday parties and things like that. And um, the architectural brand, Keith B. Dixon Architectural. I've been doing ar architectural since the beginning of my career. So um, I'm going to be doing a webinar on how you can finish your, your architectural photos or your landscape photos down the road here. All right. If you're on social media, um, one of the best ways to see what I'm up to and what I'm doing and, and um, getting information in terms of, uh, you know, how I can help you. I'm on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter is huge. It's, it's about 31,000 people right now, and it's pretty active. Uh, usually on Fridays, I do what's called a follow frenzy, and uh, that's a quick way to build up your followers. Um, it's just a bunch of people in my network, and we're following each other back and forth and tweeting. Um, we do it three times a day. Um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I'm also on Facebook, so you can definitely friend me there. I write articles on examiner.com and I talk about the products that I use, the things that I do. And I'm um, also give advice on, on everything from pricing, um, on down to whatever frustration you could probably think of. Pinterest is probably more like a collection of everything that I do. So if you want to just get a quick overview as to you know, who is this guy, Keith B. Dixon? What is he doing? Pinterest is definitely the best way. And then there's also Google Plus, um, which I mostly use for my education and uh, classroom situations. And as you guys may or may not know, some of you may be in my C class, my C4 Hayward class right now. And we're basically uh, covering basic photography from start to finish. All right. So there's that G plus. So let's talk about the event photography workflow and before I do, I want to tell you a quick story. Um, I was watching The Grid the other day. Uh, it's a Scott, Scott Kelby program, and Matthew Jordan Smith was on there. And he mentioned that he had approximately 1 or 5.6 million images that he had created um, in archive. And, um, I mean, that's a mere that, – that, that's a, my, my one point. I have about 1.2, 1.3 right now. And it's it gets tougher and tougher to manage. And I think that's the important thing about having a good workflow so you can identify that. And I want to share this nugget with you um, in terms of just finding and finding images. I um, had a lady call me up and we had photographed uh, some images for her back in 2012. And that's all she knew, um, a name in 2012. And I literally went in, just typed in. Or, or I went to 2012 in the file structure, um, went to the folder, found the image, uploaded the image uh, to my photo shelter account, and she purchased two digital images, which netted approximately $150. So um, that's probably the easiest $150 you're going to basically make, and um, it was quick. So um, that's what I want you to take away from this. Not only are you going to be more streamlined, more profitable, but you're going to be able to find your images, and that's that's important. So um, let's talk about image correction tools. So there's two things that you need to know. There's image correction, image correction tool, and I don't really know of another image correction tool out there. They're built into Lightroom, the eyedropper. Um, there's some pros and cons to that. I mean, Lightroom can be all things to everybody. And then there's perfectly clear. So perfectly clear is definitely a leader in this forefront, in this forefront, and it's a great product. And I'm going to show you just how I use it. And then there's the finishing products. So you have Nick filters and all those things. They're completely different. And I'm going to show you how 
you can basically finish your image and still have a color cast in it. We're going to cover that in detail. Okay, so this is what perfectly clear is not. It's definitely not a filter. Um, there's a lot of those out there. People put filters on their images all the time. It's not a mask, saturator, or distorter. So it's none of those. It's it's in, it's an intelligent program that goes in and analyzes your image and fixes the things that are wrong. Sometimes the things that we can't even see, and that's the amazing part of the program. So before we get into perfectly clear, I want to show you how to build a good file structure. It's scalable. Um, for whatever reason, if Lightroom went away, um, you could still your file structure would still be intact. And Lightroom just sits on top of that. And what you do is you bring it into Lightroom and you can take it out. It's really just that simple. So here we go. And, and here's the, the primary points of interest that I want you to kind of be thinking about. Right. And I'm going to show you this live. So you have your source file and you're going to go out to a destination drive and a backup, hopefully. And if you're not backing up your work, um, I would definitely and highly recommend that you always create backups. I had a drive failure, um, not with Netgear, by the way. You guys know I'm a Netgear ambassador. I had a drive failure not too long ago. It cost me about $500 to get it fixed. And the product is out of warranty, but, but because I write publicly, uh, I think this company is probably going to replace that unit because their customer service is, 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 is important to them. And they know that if they treat, you know, this situation the right way, you know, I may write something good about them or I may not. Right. So keep that in mind. Dry failures happen. All right. So we have our source file. We have a destination and we have a backup. Your destination is generally going to be your primary drive that you're going to be working off of. And your backup drive is going to be where you're going to store or archive the, the masters. And I refer to your primary images as the master. And typically I'm shooting in a, a raw file all the time. Rarely do I shoot JPEG photos. So um, just to keep that in mind, there's just, it's more, they're bigger files, but drive space is cheap and, uh, or not cheap, but uh, cost effective. Drive space is cost effective. So uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't be shooting a raw file. All right. So another point that I want you to remember, and a lot of us do this, I've, I did it for a long time. And um, photograph, when, you, when, you're, when you're creating your images, the thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to correct and enhance at the same time. And I'm going to show you why that could be a potential problem down the road. And even if the image looks a certain way on screen, it looks perfect. There's a good possibility that it could be a cast and you're not going to see it until you print that image. And that's where the frustration starts. So it's two different processes. And that's where Perfectly Clear basically carves a niche into this particular arena. And that's what makes it a benefit and important to you as, as a photographer. So don't do that. Don't um, image correct and enhance at the same time. Now. There are going to be some times when you can do your correction in the field by using an expo disc or a, a gray card, um, and then you won't have to do that. But I'm still going to show you another other ways that you can use perfectly clear, because if your image is balanced, you run it through perfectly clear, it may take it a completely different direction because it's already you're already there. But there are other features that you can use as well. Let me uh, just see if we have any questions here before I dive into this any further, you guys. And girls, Let's see what we got here. Here we go. Okay, everybody can hear me. We're doing good here. All right. Um, so, Arrow, Joseph, you guys welcome. Um, Arrow and Joseph can just shoot me a quick message and let me know kind of what the the type of photography you're doing, so I can kind of get a feel for that. And Let's dive back into this. You guys ready? All right, here we go. So, here we go. So there's two types of, and, and I'm gonna really drill them down to just two types. There's a visual edit, so you just shot your job and 
what you want to do is you run it, want to run through and do a visual edit. That's, that just means you're going to eliminate images that you're not going to process. So you're not doing extra work. Your computer's not doing extra work and you're going to move right into, you're going to move right into perfectly clear. So that's your visual edit. And then before you do in the selection process, you're going to be thinking about these things that I call the three C's of, of e image editing. And one is the contrast, the composition, and is the image compelling? And the contrast is important because you, you want to, when you, when you're editing, if an image is just blown out, right, you don't want to waste a lot of time with that, especially in, in an event situation and an event situation where you actually have to do what's called a live upload where they're blogging, you're shooting pictures and they're blogging them within an hour of shooting. So you don't want to, you don't want to be uploading hot photos, blown out, dark photos. Um, you want the composition to be strong and appealing. So you want to be photographing them in the thirds. You want to be watching your background. So I have this term that I call a cave shot. You know, you want to be careful that you're not shooting a lot of cave shots. Sometimes it's, it's, it's uh, unavoidable. The lighting is just bad in the venue. Uh, and you want to create shots that are compelling, handshakes, smiles, um, people doing things that really represent what that event is about, interaction. The benefits of a workflow are pretty simple. Profitability, right? As you're moving through the program, uh, as you're moving through your edit process, you want to do it as quickly as possible. The longer you sit there, the less money you're going to make as a professional. And yes, you can pay other people to do it, but um, this is my baby. You know, when I create an image, it's my baby. I want to see it from start to finish. I don't want to outsource it because if for whatever reason that company is not in business, right, that's going to impact my entire workflow process. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a stickler about that. So I literally sit down, as painful as it can be sometimes, and I edit out these images. So consistency, and that's that's something organization and consistency, they work hand in hand. Um, you want to be organized so that when that $150 sale pops up that you didn't really do any work for, you're doing good. All right. Onward. So there's something, and I'm going to show you guys this. It's called a straight in correction. Um, all that means is you're, you're doing a live you're doing a live upload for a client. So you're shooting and then you're turning in your best 20, your best 30, whatever the image count is, and they're uploading them to their blog. You're, you're doing your edit actually on camera in terms of the composition, the exposure. You're, you're basically hitting the perfect image on camera and giving it all and passing it off. There's no time for any super edits. And what I do is I sh I'll, sh I'll shoot those images and then I'll run them through perfectly clear just right out the gate. So that's what I call a straight in image. I'll run them through perfectly clear, out as a JPEG and upload. So just I'm minimizing steps. All right, so let's take a look at file structure because this is gonna be really important, you guys. So let me just minimize these screens really quick here. And we're going to go right over to, I use a travel drive, um, the same one all the time, with redundancy, by the way. And here's our file structure right here. I hope you can see my cursor. And let me just check to see if you guys have any questions in there. Okay. Looks like it's going good. All right. So here's my uh, file structure. I like to name out each section. And it's based on, uh, honestly, those numbers are based on profitability um, to, to a certain extent. So commercial being a priority uh, consumer, and you can call this whatever, you can call it one, two, three, you can call it 2000, whatever the case may be. They, I'm, I'm on a Mac platform, so it supports long file names. So 100 for commercial, and I carry that file structure through on all of my drives. And if you click on it, then it's 101 for events, portraits. That way, if I needed to direct somebody, I could say, go to the 100, click on 102, and then, because these names are going to repeat themselves, and that could be a little confusing, right? So click on events, and now we have a company name along with the date it was shot on. So company name, date it was shot on. I, I stay true to that format, 
and it it definitely works really well. So um, this master demo is just for dem demonstration purposes, but generally I have a file titled masters and um, always build a corrected file. So when I'm editing my images right out of perfectly clear, I'm going right into a corrected file. So that's where those the images that I'm going to use, that's where they're housed. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to run through a brief edit. I'm going to show you how I got from 100 images down to 50 and then 50, which I did a second pass. So I'm going to call them a second second pass. I did a second pass and knocked off nine more for a total count of about 41 images uh, to tell a story. And that's that's kind of where you want to be. So here's the file structure right here. And when we build out. The last part of it, you'll just see um, I use what's called a finals folder um, and an edited folder, depending on the type of job. And I stay stay true to this format all the way through. So I have an admin because sometimes I've got to do releases and licensing. So I put those in one folder. And here's the interesting thing. And this is this is based on experience and using Lightroom. And it, it could have changed, but I create a catalog for each event. So here's this company Bowen Drape that I shot back in 2013. What I'll do is I'll actually go in here and create just a Lightroom catalog for just this program because I wanted to run fast and clean as possible. Lightroom is a database. And as that database increases in file size, it starts to slow down, right? Um, it's a little bit more to manage, but I also create what's called a master file that I use just to preview. Someone calls up and they say, hey, Keith, we want to um, get this file, whatever. I just go to the master file and it pulls up all these numbers and I just kind of basically click down. That's going to be super important for your profitability because when you get out there and you're shooting, for instance, um, in April, I'm literally shooting back-to-back -back jobs every single day. And I'm probably going to process anywhere from 500 to 2,000 images. I need to be as organized as possible because it gets a little hectic sometimes. And if you get turned around, you know, your file structure can turn into spaghetti. So here's that file structure. So we go Lightroom for a master catalog and commercial. So I do commercial work. I do events, portraits, commercial portraits. So that would be on site with executives, companies, groups, um, editorial. So I do um, a lot of uh, construction related work. You guys didn't know about construction work in photography, huh? Yes, um, construction companies hire photographers to document and it pays pretty well. So that if you're here, that's a nugget for you. Property photos. Um, so I shoot a lot of commercial properties as well as uh, real estate, um, resorts, things like that. All right, consumer. Weddings, events, and portraits. I shoot that under my event photographic brand. And then education, and the list kind of goes on. So that's the file structure. I hope you guys can benefit from that. And let me just see who is here. Okay, so portrait, a hobbyist, Errol. Okay, very good. As a hobbyist, um, I, and I hope, uh, Errol, I hope you come back for, uh, I'm doing a I'm going to be doing some street photography. I love street photography and uh, I have a project 2212 that I'm working on and involves street photography and perfectly clear, perfectly clear is definitely a great tool to basically get through those 200 images that you're going to shoot out there and, and just get you away from like, okay, you know, I got to sit here and adjust these sliders and waste all this time as, as opposed to, I'm going to run it through. That looks good. I'm going to pick that one, that one, that one, that one, and I'm out. OK, so uh, portrait. Uh, hey, Mario, what's going on? I see you there. Uh, Joseph, let me see. Use multiple lighting. Let me see. Um, I do use multiple Lightroom catalogs. Uh, have been for years. I haven't really had a, a problem with it. Um, it's a little bit more to manage, but it's for me, it's safer. And if I need to pull my catalog on the road with me for a particular company, I'm not pulling an entire catalog loaded with companies. So that's the other benefit. Warren, uh, Warren is on. Okay. So we're going to move onward. Let's bring up Lightroom. All right. So here's a job 
Um, this is, and these are real jobs. So generally before I really get into, and, and here's a, a, a valuable tip for you guys. Um, as you can see, there's my 100 commercial uh, events, and then there's the name of the company, right? So before I actually, when I walk into a scene, the first thing I do is I, I, I do something where um, I'll look at the foreground, middle ground, and background to see just how great the light is changing before I make that image. And I'm going to show you some, some really bad backgrounds that uh, no program can correct. I mean, it's just pretty much the blown, a blown highlight. And you don't want to waste your time with those. And then I'm going to show you an image that's blown. But, you know, if that's the chief executive officer and that's the only picture you have because all the other ones, she had her eyes closed or she had a, you know, she was had a mean mug on her face. Um, this, this, this is about the best you're going to get. So we'll definitely cover that. All right. So let's look at this first company. Right. And as you can see, there's that corrected folder I told you about. And then here's the master. So it's a hundred and twelve. This is a small event. Um, for a startup company that does fashion. There's all the images down there. Um, I want to tell a story. I want to, the story's about this machine. It makes belts. Um, they had people there speaking from the fashion industry. I, I, that's the story that I want to tell. I want to show people interacting with this, showing interest, smiling, laughing. Um, and I just want to tell a story. Whenever you're working at an event, the thing that you want to do is tell a story. You want to give somebody who wasn't there a pretty good idea as to what happened. So what I did is I went through and I'll just go through literally like this. And I'm going to close these because I don't want to make any adjustments, right? I don't want to make any adjustments to my photos. I just want to pick out the ones that I'm going to use. And I'm literally, I'm just going to go through just like this. And I'm in Lightroom, I'm pushing the P key for pick. And I'm looking for photos that tell a story. So she's wearing a pair of Google glasses. Um, I might, in an edit, pro, in an editing situation, I might think, well, how does that relate to the event? Uh, does it make sense? Is she interacting? Um, here's some people with smiles, people eating. These events can be pretty tough because there's sometimes there's not a lot going on. So you got to create your opportunities. There's a classic situation where this lady. She was an eye closer pretty much the entire time. And oh, by the way, the technique for that is you just put on your uh, your red eye reduction. And what it does is it'll dilate their pupils first and then get the shot off. So, um, OK, so here we go. Right. So I go through my first pass. And, and that's something we used to do when I worked at, in magazine. We do passes on photos very quickly. Right. And I narrowed those down to these 49 right here. Right. Here are the 49 that I got, right? So I'm just going through. I want to get, oh, by the way, this lady here, she's the CEO of the company, right? So I want to make sure I get a, a ton of shots with her, people having a good time. You'll notice a lot of people in here are smiling, right? And I'll be, and I'll, you know, I'll, I, don't t I don't do jokes. Well, there's that lady. Remember the eye closer, right? So now once I reviewed my image on the back of the camera, I realized, okay, she's an eye closer, right? If you're working in the fashion industry, I'm going to tell you that you're, especially for a startup company, there's not going to be a lot of money involved in terms of what you can make, right? So the better workflow you have, the better you can bid the job, the faster you can get the images out. And I want you to remember that. So a lot of smiles always show wide shots of, you know, I try to wait until people congregate in an area to make it look busy, right? Like, oh, there was a lot of people there. Oh my God, I got to go next time, right? That's making your images work for the client, right? I'm going to put people together. They were actually standing around talking. So I'll go over and say, hey, come on, get together. I'm, I'm going to pick my background. You'll notice there's a lot of light there in the back. So I'll pick my background. You're not going to always have that luxury, but um, that's just something to think about. Right. So I'm just going to here's the images I flagged off. Right. So these are my picks. And here we go. So I'm going to basically run these through perfectly clear. And you'll notice a lot of the backgrounds are very similar. I don't want the program to work so hard, right? That, and I don't want it to be, you know, bottlenecking because I got an image in there. It's just so crazy. It just shouldn't have never even been in the edit. So you'll notice the backgrounds are very similar. And this is a strategy more than anything, a strategy that I use to process faster. So you notice the backgrounds, right? Okay. So when we go into, um, I'm going to pick this image right here. 
towards the front. Let me see here. Okay, where are we at here? I'm going to pick an image out of here that, uh, bear with me here. So we go through. Okay, so I'm going to pick this image right here. It's a, a raw file. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, there's a couple ways to do this. You can either control, right click, and go to edit in, right? Perfectly clear, right? But I'm going to actually go to export, right? And this dialog is going to pop up with the plugin, right? Perfectly clear. You see that Athen Tech, perfectly clear. By the way, perfectly clear is, was developed by a company called Athen Tech, and it's not, it's, it's not a new product. It's def, it's a relative, it's been on the market a while and, um, these guys have poured their heart and soul into it. So for right now, I'm just going to leave that where it is because I'm, I'm going to open up the dialogue box. You can hide it too. So if you know exactly what you're looking for, you can just hide it and it'll process in the background. And then I'm going to choose a folder for the, for the image. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and you can make this if you don't have it set up just yet. I'm going to go to commercial, right? You see how easy it is to navigate events, bow and drape, right? And if I didn't have this file here, I would basically just go in and click new folder, choose, and I'm rocking and rolling, right? So as you can see, I already just to save us some time, I've created some, uh, I've already processed this. You just click choose and now you're ready to go. Now, here's the great thing. Here's the great thing about this. You can output as a JPEG. So if you need to just really get this done, you're on location. It's like, can we get these photos? Because I'm jumping on a plane to New York, right? You just, boom, output these as JPEG. I use Pro, um, Pro Photo RGB. And that's according to, uh, it's, it's a wider color gamut. You can't see it with your eye. It works in print. And um, so that's what I use. And that's according to Adobe. And I'm just going to output it at 240. 240 works good. 300 works good too. And I'm going to click export, right? So that file's already been there. So I'm just going to click um, overwrite. And this is going to open up. So I like to process. Sometimes um, people, when they demo photos, they'll uh, use a, a JPEG file because it's faster. And the thing about that is I want you to see what it, what it really does. I want, to, I want to do you some justice. So here's our photo, right? And... The thing that I really want you to take home from this is just literally one click, one click. Look at that. One, one, one. There's no sliders to, I mean, there are sliders, but you can really get your result right here. So if there's a 10 in there or you just want to adjust the details up, it's all right there. But if that's not good enough, you can go in here and basically work your way down. Color tone or a tone, your color, clarity, portrait, eyes. Um, yes. The amazing thing about this program is you it will actually detect faces within the photograph and correct them. Now, they're back pretty far. The faces are small, right? So not so much here, right? Um, I've tested it, and it, it, it does. It does work. I've seen it make the minor corrections underneath. But if they're really, if you frame them in tight, I mean, perfectly clear, it's all over it. So there's no selecting and, you know, selecting the teeth, the nose, and if you... On the 30, I think it's the 31st. Um, I think it's the 31st. I'm going to be doing a, the portrait studio. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So you can also create presets. So you can stack this. You can do a setting here, go and adjust, fix some things, and then go right down here and create um, your own preset. Isn't that amazing? So let me just peek and see if I got any questions here. We're about the halfway point. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So just started shooting events, fashion shows. Oh, perfectly. You definitely, um, Christopher definitely want to get it, get on board with this because I mean, you could be forever, uh, just going through images, um, portrait, just a hobbyist looking for pixel quality. Um, let me comment on, I'm going to sidetrack for just a second. Hopefully I don't fall too far behind. Um, one of the things that'll definitely affect your pixel quality is lens reciprocal. And you have to, uh, in a nutshell, the thing that I'm going to tell you about lens reciprocal is when you're hand holding your camera, you always want your shutter speed to be faster than your focal length or your framing. Your focal length is kind of mis 
it's kind of like a misconception because people think distance. But your framing, if you're shooting at a 200 millimeter um, framing, you want your shutter speed to be at least 250. And yeah, there's VR on your lens and, and it helps, but um, I, I, I'm not going to toy around with that. I was trained the old school way to get on a tripod and, and I do use a monopod at my event. So if you see my images, you're like, how does he get them so crisp? I'm on a monopod, so I don't have to deal with, I'm not going to fight with physics. You know, it's impossible. So that's the tip tip for you guys there. Get on a monopod in an event with a flash and your photos will be crispy. So uh, let's see here. Who else? I'm just going to look at a couple more. We're going to dive right back into this portrait. OK, makes no sense. No master catalog, but good directory structure. JP. Um, no, I do have a master catalog. Um, I definitely have a master catalog. It's usually at the top. And I, I don't know if you uh, if you saw that, JP. I do have a master catalog. Um, I just create a catalog for each job, each job. And it's housed within that folder. So if I need to go back at some point, two years down the road, when the, that, that Lightroom catalog is just, you know, thousands and hundreds of thousands of images, I'm not bogged down because Light, Lightroom is a database. And I can just go in and pull up that one specific Lightroom catalog and look at those images and get them out. All right. Uh, let's see here. What else? Uh, works. I'm using Lightroom plugin, family photographer. All right. Let's get back to it. So here we go, folks. So I'm just going to, let's say um, I, I just want to fix that tent, right, that's in there. Let's Let me show you how to look at that. So if you look at his face just right here, you can really see the cast now. Because what happens is you're taking tons of these images and your eyes get adjusted to what it sees, not what it doesn't see, right? So there's that cast right there. That's the difference. It's like putting a, lay, a dark film over the top of your, your uh, image, which basically may reduce your exposure by a stop. So you have to either overexpose it to get it up and that just creates a whole different set of issues, right? So I'm going to cancel that out, and let's go down here and look at the uh, the difference here. So here's um, here's our two images. So here's our original image, right? And when I edited this, the, what I did was I chose the second image because he was closer, and that's one of the criteria, right? You see where I got his foot right here? Um, that kind of bothers me a little bit, but you know, these are mostly uh, top industry people. So I, I want to get this done quickly. So you're going to, things like that can happen. Um, you can also crop up, you know, to kind of, but you see the difference in the background. Let's bring these up together so you can really get a good feel for it. You see our perfectly clear image versus here. So it's a, it's red, um, just completely different completely different image compared to this one. All right, let's look at some more differences. Uh, so here's another event. Oh boy. Remember I was telling you about those backgrounds, right? Well, I want you to know that when you're using perfectly clear, I mean, it, it, it's not the, the end all to the be all. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you, but if you're shooting images like this, it, it's going to be tough. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a tough situation. Um, here's our end result. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this in. We're going to make some adjustments right before, right? So we're going to go into develop mode, and we're going to knock this down as much as possible. So we're just going to knock these highlights down, right? Because they're just, well, maybe not so much there. This is just too much, right? And then we're going to take this image into perfectly clear. And that's the exception to the rule, right? So that your image generally comes out like this. And I have a, uh, a filter, right, called event window, right? I can pop that on and finish it. So that would be my finishing. So I'm going to use perfectly clear to get the 10 off, right? There's, a, there's an actual 10 in here, which is amazing. And you can't really see it. If we take this white dropper and go to this gray jacket, it essentially just made it even redder, right? If we drop this um, preset on here, right, 
It doesn't do anything. This is the exact same preset that's on here. So I'm just going to reset it. So the difference really is that Perfectly Clear took the 10 out here, right? And I'm going to I'm going to open this up in I'm going to open this up in uh Perfectly Clear. So let's go to we're going to just bring that up and we're going to go here day 1 and we're just going to look at some images here. So that's our corrected folder. Remember I was telling you about the corrected folder. So these are all the corrected images coming out. And then here are all the other images. So I'm just going to already pre-flag these so that we can just kind of get through it quickly. Okay, here's our image. And what I want you to know is, okay, look, if you take a bad picture, nothing's going to save it. I mean, if it's bad, it's blown out, or your detail's lost, um, I mean, you're just going to work hard to fix it. Right. I mean, that's the bottom line. So I want to show that to you so that you understand exactly what the threshold is for this. So here's our program. I'm just going to click export. I'm going to change my um, my file output for my corrected folder to this company here. And here's how we're going to do it. So you see these uh, these folders here. So I'm going to go to day one, correct it. And then I'm just going to choose that one and then output it. It's already there. Right. So I'm just going to click export and uh, I'll just say overwrite. I'm going to cancel it because we already have it there. And as you can see, here's the processing going. It's going pretty good. And here's our image. So you can see it made a little bit of difference, but that's a that's a tough one. I mean, that's a raw file fix right there. And um, tent, we turned it blue and we turned it blue because I'm actually shooting on Kelvin here. So I've pretty much hit the uh, the white balance on this so it's it's perfect so we don't need to do anything to that our concern is just going to be back here let's see what see what perfectly clear picks up the tint is so fine here right that you can barely see you can barely see it you see that you can barely see the fix here well, here you can definitely see it. It's, you can see the see the green coming in right in here. So we have green and magenta, right? Opposite colors. So perfectly clear saying, okay, well you got white balance here. Like you're you want to fix the tent. It's that intelligent. It's going to give you just the total opposite. You see that? And you can see it up here. So you've got your warm and your cool working right there, right? Landscape, right? That's how sensitive this program is in terms of how it analyzes color. So when we go in, I'm just going to click cancel here because we have the image down here. When you go in and correct it, right, um, what I'm doing it for an image like this, especially when I know that the tint is or the white balance is pretty accurate. What I'm doing here is I'm going to go in and I'm going to basically make sure that I don't have any type of cast because I've got basically warm light coming in, warm white light coming in from here. And then I've got this all this reflection from this these colors up here in the ceiling, the floor, right, creating this cast that I probably probably can't really see. And I'm just going to go in and knock the uh, the tin off or um, maybe I'm going to add some detail to it. And I'm just going to push the buttons and push those buttons in perfectly clear to make sure that um, I'm seeing what I'm seeing so that when I output that image back. I'm able to do something like this. And all I did was in develop mode is I created um, this preset called window event. And you can you can see where the sliders are right here. So I just bumped up the clarity, moved the highlights back um, so I could get this image. All right. Let me check and see if uh makes. OK, we got to that one right there. OK, works. I'm using Lightroom. OK. All right, so I, how are you guys? Uh, pound ninety pound. Okay, so it looks like we're doing pretty good here. It looks like I'm hitting on uh, hitting all the points. All right, now here's another example, right? Here's another example. These are tough photos because their skin tone's pretty close to the color that you see on the wall. So perfectly clear, here's our, our perfectly clear image, and then here's our 
our basic, our original image, which is a net file. So if I could go in here and say, okay, I'm going to click on that, that helps. And then I can go in here and do all these sliders, but, or go over here and do all the sliders, create a preset. That preset's not going to work universally across the board. And that's where the challenges really start. So um, for images that are related to this, this scene, I'm, I'm definitely going to run them through perfectly clear. And let's, let's take this image right here. So I'm going to go back to library mode and let's go to where are we at here let's go to day one and let's flag it okay uh, we'll just take it right out of here so here's our image and all i'm going to do is i'm going to go to export and I, I want you guys to be really fluid with this. I'm going to go to export and I'm going to change my folder because now I'm correcting in a different one. And what I can do is I can just go to those corrected folders and basically um, just collect those images in smart folders or smart collections. I mean, there's a bunch of ways you can pull these, these together, but that's, a, that's another Lightroom class. And let's see here, day two, where are we at? Finals. Okay, live images. So I would just put these in a corrected folder for day two, wherever that image was, and then um, rock and roll. So let's see how perfectly clear navigates this one particular image. I'm going to click export. And as you can see, the process time is pretty good. And let me give you a benchmark for how long this could take. Um, if, I, if I was processing about 80 images, I could literally probably get it done in about 20 minutes or so. So you just let it run and then you just walk away, go get a coffee or whatever you want to do, maybe pay some bills, invoice some people hopefully, and come back and your, and your work is done. The thing you don't want to be doing is just sitting there because time is money. So here's how perfectly clear is navigating, right? You can see those small changes. So dark fixes. Um, noise and this is an interesting feature I'm going to show you uh, you can actually go in here and you see this feature right here where it says noise it actually detects and it'll tell you no noise has been detected right so that's a, another interesting feature um, so here's our tent that's a little blue right that's a little blue for me it could work right there's our landscape and yeah I do sometimes I know it's not a landscape photo but I'll definitely click on to see you know how it works out I think I like that right? There's a difference. Um, it's just bringing out a little bit more details, making the skin a little soft. And with her, for instance, if she's the, uh, the uh, you know, one of the executives in the company, I could go in here and literally just set this up and knock down this right here in terms of, you know, what's, what's going on under her eyes. And that's a real simple thing. We just go right in here to portrait and we have all these selections. I'm going to cover those in my next webinar on studio, white teeth whitening. And the program, there's nothing to select. The program does it automatically, which is beautiful. All right, so I'm just going to click cancel there. Let me see. Yeah, uh, How many of you guys actually shoot weddings or want to shoot weddings? Weddings are grueling. And they're not only grueling because you're out there, right? They're grueling because you have to process a lot of images. And that's what's I mean, that could just, uh, that's what really bogs you down. Some photographers outsource their, their stuff to other people. And, you know, if there's, there's, I mean, if that's your thing, that's your thing. Uh, I like to do all of my own processing. I'm very adamant about that. And um, under my uh, event photographic brand, I'll shoot some weddings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some images. I'm going to show you uh, an image. I'm going to show you the end result, right? Here's an image I photographed right here. This has been post-processed. Literally, I caught her doing this. I'm just standing there and she just went for it. And I just happened to catch it. There's a lot of difficulties with these images because you have to hit it just right because of the reflection. There's This is a Model T4. There was hardly any light in here. So, I mean, it was literally just dropping the right amount of light in here. And here's what that original looked like. So, as you can see, I did all that I could do to get that uh, light in there just perfectly. Now, if you look at her arm, you're going to notice there's a lot of shadowing in there, right? Which makes it look dark. Well, 
when I fold it, when I post processes, I had to literally go in with a program called Viveza and just kind of lift it up so it looked it looked a little bit more lively, right? So watch this. Here we go. So I'm just going to open this up in perfectly clear. And I took the shortcut this time, right? Here's another dialog box. You could actually control right click and bring up um, the file this way. It'll open with a Lightroom, whatever your, your Lightroom adjustments are. You can open it as a TIFF, PSD, JPEG, right? Um, 240, you can go 300 if you want to, right? Just depends on whether or not you're going to print or what, what you're going to do with that. And as you can see, this is, a, this is a pretty big file. I'm shooting a pretty big camera right here. All right. Um, here we go. Okay, so here's our image. You see, you notice the difference here, right? I'm going to go right here. Here's detail. You, you see the difference there? I mean, you could just see it just pop, right? Look at the cast. Look at the cast. So if you look, if you're looking right here, you could just see the cast on there. Look at our arm right here, and just watch how it just livens up, right? Livens up, and I'm using the uh, H, the high definition HD details to bring it out, right? Um, tent fix. Look at that. You can see it even more, right? So it, it, it's going to be a creative choice, right? It's going to be a creative choice in terms of what you do. Well, after I post process that original image, I'm just going to cancel right out of here. And I'm going to open this one up right here. So I'm just control click. And there's two ways to get to uh, perfectly clear, right? I'm going to open that up. And let me check and see if uh, I guess I'm doing okay, you guys, huh? Any questions? Oh, you're shooting a Kinsey Edda tomorrow. I'm, good luck, Mario. Appreciate that, man. All right. Appreciate you sharing with us. Okay, here we go. So here's our details in our original image. And I call this finishing. Sometimes, yeah, I know I said there's other finishing products out there, but sometimes you can finish with perfectly clear too, right? And what I'll do is I'll go through to make sure that the edits that I did in enhancement didn't create extra cast because that happens, right? And here's here's look at that. See see the cast over the top. That's it's like it's almost like creating a layer of film over the top that just takes away from the detail of the image. You can see it right here in her face. See how sensitive that is. So now I just touched up my image, um, and this is going to be a matter of taste in terms of what you do, right? So she's looking dead on to the camera. I could literally um, go into to beautify, click adjust and lighten up, do all these things. And then if I had multiple images, because you can batch the images and it corrects each Im image independently as opposed to universally, like, like it does in Lightroom. And that's, that's always been a, a, a bottleneck for me in the past. You know, I'm, I have my images, I'm ready to go. And I, you know, they all look the same. I apply a preset and then I get all these crazy adjustments and I got to go back and do it again. Oh, that was so frustrating. So um, this program shines when it comes to that. It just it analyzes each image independently and makes the correction. So this is where I would finish an image to make sure that I didn't have any color cast because color cast is going to basically knock down. And I don't know if you guys notice printers have latitudes. Um, so an image that may appear dark on the screen may print under uh, underexposed so you might have to push it maybe a stop a third stop a tenth stop in your program so that you get the perfect print so um if you have this cast on here like this right not only will your image be under but it'll be way under and then you'll adjust it up and then start blowing out the highlights or the or or basically covering your details so this is this is golden in terms of this part of it and believe me, I've, I've seen a lot of programs on the market. Here's another example, and this is going to be our last one. We're just, we're, we're, we're approaching the bewitching hour. Let me make sure. Um, oh, by the way, I have a code that I'm going to give away, a 10% code on uh, Perfectly Clear that'll allow you to save 10%. So um, I hope that 
you guys are able to take advantage of that because this, this program will definitely make a difference in, in your workflow process and your, your, um, your profitability as a photographer. Okay, so here's an image I photographed. I usually like to do um, some edgy types of photos, and the, the interesting with thing, this bride hired me just for that reason. So here I'm shooting a fish eye. I'm laying on the ground. I'm in, this is in Mendocino, so this was a two-day wedding um, that I shot last year, and here's our finished product and perfectly clear. And I'm going to bring these up side by side so you can see them, and the, the original image was not finished in perfectly clear. I didn't have perfectly clear last year. And you can see the difference. This image is just popping. Well, they're facing the sun, right? They want it to look as natural as possible. So, you know, there's some highlight issues there, right? Um, but this is really about the image and what they're doing, right? So this is the original image that I processed that's actually on my site, eventphotographic.com. And then this is one that I actually ran through perfectly clear. And I'm going to just run this through perfectly clear. So I'm just going to right click, edit in just so we can get there quickly. And you can also export, right? I'm going to leave all that the same. And as you can see, it opens up pretty quickly. This is a big file, by the way. All right. So here's our image. It, we brought it in. And here we can manually adjust a lot of the sliders. And just if, if you miss this, we can create presets. And the one thing that I like about creating presets in here is we can put a description versus Lightroom, right? Versus Lightroom where um, you have to literally just kind of put something in your preset that's descriptive. So event window, it's like, okay, what, what, what was that? You know, so that, that can be a little frustrating sometimes when you're, when you're uh, trying to figure out and you're trying to move quickly through what it is you're doing. So we can put that description in there and call it something. I usually number my, my settings so that my presets so that I know exactly what they are. Let's go over to presets and look how easy one click. Hey, you know what? Some people might like that, right? Matter of fact, this could be one step to your finishing because now you can go in and sharpen it up, right? Knock down the red just a little bit and you got an image. So don't discount this sometimes, you know, in terms of, okay, this is not a dark fix. I'm not going to use the dark fix. Be creative with the, with the settings, right? As you can see, that's a little blue. That could work too, depending on what you're doing. So creatively, right? Landscape. Um, now I actually use the image that you see in Lightroom here, the finish, I actually use landscape. So this is a landscape setting in perfectly clear. So don't be shy about experimental, um, or experimenting, right? Don't be shy, right? So all I did was that, and you can adjust, you can go in here and play with the settings right maybe it's like this maybe it's like that um, you can adjust the exposure down so that you just create a little vignetting here to draw to push the, the attention up um, there's a lot to be a lot to be said here so just you can explore with the settings and that's the versatility in the program and then all I would do is just save all and just go right out so we've got about five minutes in this program and um, you know, if you guys want to shoot some questions at me, uh, Mario, did you have a question about shooting Kinsietas? Are all of your events in RAW or JPEG settings? Um, no, definitely, definitely RAW. I mean, I can't remember the time that I've even shot JPEG images, except for uh, outputting them to the client as JPEGs because they they can't open RAW files usually. Um, my first shoot at San Francisco Night Club tonight. This is good. Um, definitely. So, um, you know, you, you might have to push your ISO a little bit. I don't recommend doing that all the time, but you know, it depends on what you're shooting with. If you're shooting with the pro body. You can push your ISO to about 2000 and still get some pretty clean images. Um, see here, recent problem on my previous event with the magenta reddish. Yeah. Um, that could be a problem. 
definitely magentas and reds could be a, definitely split the up lighting and those are challenges uh, if you can use a flash that helps a lot uh, seems to oh William Mosley seems to remove the shadows very well definitely um, you got to be careful though when you start playing with the shadows because sometimes you'll introduce grain into the image but yes perfectly clear is really good at, at getting the shadows out um, questions about how perfectly clear works using Lightroom okay so we have that and it also works in um, Photoshop as well so you can go right out to Photoshop I just did a maternity shoot for a legacy client um, which means that I shot their engagement wedding first child born um, you can see that on Facebook if you're following me uh, okay so let's go into the end here so we talked about straight on corrections the thing that I want you to know Wait, let me just back out of here really quick and close this little thing here. The thing that I want you to know that image correction and workflow is two separate things. Um, and you want to treat them that way. You want to stay away from doing both at the same time because color casts are very difficult to see and recognize sometimes. Um, you can see the obvious ones like when you're having those, those greens and magentas and the reds popping out but the the dark gray color cast that those are those can be pretty tough to see so um you want you want your flow to look something like this you want to do a visual edit first while you're picking out the images that you're going to run through perfectly clear and that happens two ways you can do a straight in straight in right you're just going straight in to um perfectly clear or you can just go right to a visual edit and a pick and then get the image that images that you're looking for and run them through perfectly clear then you have um, and your output is either going to be something like finals or corrected so um, if I'm shooting an event generally I'll just final those images I'm not going to do too when you're shooting corporate you know the fancy finishes they're not looking for that generally. They just want some clean, crisp, well-composed images. And keep that in mind. That's going to be the key. You'll notice that a lot of vet photographers, not a lot of processing on their pictures. They're just well-exposed, well well-processed, and well-composed. And that goes back to the three Cs. So once you come out of perfectly clear, and in my portrait session, I'm going to show you how, um, how I do that in my next webinar when I talk about portraits. I'm going to show you how I go from correcting the photo into the creative state and, and some of the things that I might do. So definitely two different processes that you, you should always look at. This is the foundation. So image correction is the foundation. Sometimes, most of the time, I'm going to say if you're out there really shooting, 80% of the time, white balance is, you have to rely on your auto white balance or Kelvin to get your scene and most new photographers they're not they're, they're not familiar with the color temperatures in terms of visually seeing them and Kelvin so um, that's a hard relationship to make sometimes it takes time to develop that so be sure that if you are using auto white balance that you're able to correct your images later on so that you don't have color cast and those eight are called 18 percent great color cast we're right at the four o'clock mark. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you. And I will talk to you soon.